Now we are gonna introduce the theoretical analysis of public goods. So remember in lecture two at the very start, we talked about utility maximization and how the utility maximization of different people can be then aggregated into a demand curve for a private good. I didn't say it was a private good, but pretty much all goods are private goods except for those examples that are public goods. So what we will do in this video is we're gonna compare the derivation of the demand curve for a private good to the derivation of the demand of a public good. That's very important because it helps us understand theoretically what the difference between those two types of goods are. So let's start with the total demand for a private good. So the example here is, is, is pizzas and demand for a private good is derived by horizontal aggregation. Now, how does horizontal aggregation work? Well, it, it, it is what uh, the name says, namely that we take the demand curve of each consumer. So how much would each consumer consume at a given price? And then we vary the price for each consumer. That's the demand curve for each consumer. And we aggregate that horizontally for all consumers. So here we have the example of three consumers. Um, consumer A has a very low willingness to pay for pizzas. Um, consumer two or consumer B higher, but not as high as consumer C. So let's start with, with consumer C. Um, and one additional comment here, we assume here that the, the that pizzas can be supplied in basically an infinite quantity at a constant marginal cost. That just makes our life a lot easier rather than wrapping our head around an upward sloping supply curve. Let's start then with consumer C. So if the price is above this level, the only person who demands that pizza, to, to demands pizza at all, is consumer C. For consumer B, the price at this, at this level, um, let's just call this PC, the price at that level is too high. If the price falls below that, it is consumer B and consumer C who are demanding pizza. Okay, but above that price PC, it's only consumer C. So the demand curve in the overall market, and the overall market here is the market by those three consumers. That's the assumption, there are only three consumers. So the overall demand in the market for at that level of price is just what consumer C wants. So let me use a different color here. Um, okay, so let's do this in orange. So this is what consumer, that, that's the demand curve for consumer C above that price PC. Right? Now, consumer B has a lower willingness to pay for pizzas. And so would only start consuming pizza at a price level that's below PC. Um, now let me call that price here PB. And so at any level for PB and above, it's consumer C consumes pizzas. And at any level between PB and PC, it's consumers B and C consume pizzas. Okay, so what we do here in that segment here of the, de of the demand curve between here and here, we add up 
the consumption of both consumer C and consumer B because they would both consume uh, consume pizzas at that point or for that price. Okay, so 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 then the slope of the demand curve changes because we have the the demand for person C and we add on to it the demand for person for person B as well. Whereas then below PB, it is actually all of those people who will consume pizza because below PB, you can see this here, even person A who has a low willingness to pay is going to consume pizzas. And so then the, 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 the market demand for pizzas below PB is the, the, is all those three demand curves added up horizontally and that's when we get when we have yet another king point here and then we have this this piece of the demand curve okay so 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 that's how that's how we get at a market demand curve so that's the total demand for a public good okay? um now in reality in in or in in the research practice of economists do we always do this addition? No. What we typically have is we have maybe two types of consumers, one with a high and one with a low valuation of the good. And then the, the demand curve would have one king point. We very rarely have, you know, in Ireland, you have four and a half million people. We don't have a demand curve then with four and a half million uh, king points. That, that, that simply would not be tractable and, and not even if there was 20 or so. Remember, but that in principle is how it works. We derive private the demand for a private good, first of all, by looking at each person's demand curve. And they, that may change depending on their willingness to pay. And then in the second step, we add them up horizontally. That's what happens with a private good. Yeah. Um, so with the private good, um, we, we aggregate things up horizontally and we, we have then an equilibrium point, which is where the marginal cost equals the, the marginal benefit. So you can see the, the demand curve as the aggregation of the marginal benefit that all the consumers in the economy get from the enjoyment of that of one more unit of that good okay so so that's uh, let's call this point a that's the 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 the, the point at which um, supply of the good equals demand right so normally you are used to having um have seeing something like that where you have an upward sloping supply curve and a downward sloping demand curve in this case the 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 demand curve is downward sloping but has a kink and the supply curve we simply simply assumed to be horizontal okay but it's it's the same principle where you have the equilibrium uh, price and quantity here where those two lines cross and with point a here it's the exact same thing now how does this work for a public good and it's it's actually quite different for a public good. So for a public good, we do not aggregate horizontally, but we add things up vertically. Right? So what do we have here? We again have three consumers, A, B, and C, who each have a different valuation for the public good. So you can see here, a values the public good a lot higher than um, than B or C. So the, the the benefit, the marginal benefit of A from having one versus two police patrols or three versus four is higher than for B or for C. And so the way we aggregate this up then to a, to a demand for this public good, we simply add up the marginal, sorry, the, the, the marginal benefits for a given number 
of units of that good. So instead of vertical aggregation, we do a horizontal, sorry, instead of horizontal aggregation, we do a vertical aggregation. So what that means is we take here, we say here, if there was one police patrol in the neighborhood, what is the marginal benefit of that for, uh, for a person? Basically going from zero to one. What is the additional benefit someone gets? What is their utility gain they get from having that additional police patrol? And so we know that for person A, it's this much, for person B, it's that much, and for person C, it's that much. And we simply add those three up, and that's where we arrive at this point here. Now, this is not drawn to scale, okay? Um, we do the same and say, well, you know, what is the marginal uh, benefit of having a second as opposed to a first police patrol? Um, and that's here. And so again, we take those three and add them up. And we take then the three marginal benefits at three police patrols, do the same for four, uh, five, and so on. And that gives us then for those for the people in this economy, the marginal benefit. So it's through vertical aggregation. And so for public, um, and, and so just as it is with private goods, it is that the marginal willingness to pay for a good decreases with the quantity of the public good. Right, so you can imagine this with police patrols. Um, if, if you live in a neighborhood where there is some crime happening the odd time, you would obviously benefit from having police patrols there. But going from zero to one is probably more beneficial to you than going from already 10 police patrols per day to 11. Right? So, 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 and, and that's an example of, and, and so you should have obviously a higher marginal willingness to pay for the provision of the first patrol rather than the 11th or the 12th or the 13th. And so how should we think then about the equivalent of a market diagram for a public good? Well, it's pretty much the same as for a private good. So the demand curve here in red measures the aggregate marginal benefit of the market. It's simply the demand curve for a given uh, number of police patrols or whatever units of the public good, how much are people in this market willing to pay? That's what the demand curve measures. Then the supply curve here again, we assume for simplicity that it's just a horizontal line. It's so police patrols are supplied at a constant marginal cost. So the first police patrol costs 600, the second costs 600, the third, the fourth, each additional one costs 600. Okay? And so we get then the equilibrium where those two lines intersect, where the marginal cost of an additional police patrol equals the marginal benefit. If we're beyond that point, so for example at three, well, what happens there is that the marginal cost of providing that additional police patrol of 600 is higher than what it actually brings in terms of benefit. Whereas here, be before or below that, that optimal point, um, for one police patrol only, the marginal benefit is actually greater than the marginal cost. So there could actually be a, a gain for a, a, a welfare gain to be had if we have more police patrols provided. And so, so the, the, the optimum is then at, uh, at, in this case, in this example, at two police patrols.